You, what was this story about you and Kiefer Sutherland? Didn't you help him out with something? Wasn't yeah, he in some trouble? Kiefer was a, what was it? I, he had hired some guy that he thought was tough. You know what I mean? Because guys in Hollywood like tough guys around them, but guys they can control. They don't like guys that are. It's like a security type thing? Yeah, right. And so, and this guy ended up to be a total jerk, right? And then they couldn't get him off the set because uh, uh, I think. Keeper promised him a SAG card. And so, he, hey, where am I going to get my SAG card? That kind of shit, you know. And when somebody says that, you're supposed to be quiet about it, you know. And and uh, and where am I going to get my line? You know? and, uh, and so, anyway, they ended up escorting him off the – escorting him off the uh, set. And about two weeks later – uh, I get a call on uh, on uh, George got a call. My friend George Perry got a call, and uh, we're down at Venice Beach. And and uh, George, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, Kiefer, what's up? And, hey, you know where Danny's at? Blum? Yeah, he's right here. He gives me the phone. And we're Ben. Danny got a problem. Said, what's up? He's uh, somebody threatened my 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 family and. What? And somebody threatened his family. So he said, and he told me. And I said, okay, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Goes, no, 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 wait, Dad. And then he got scared. Said, hey, I'll take care of it. No, but wait, I, Kiefer, you want me to take care of it or not? It, yeah, okay, all right, all right. Yeah. And uh, he was panicked, right? But but he didn't know what take care of it meant. You know? so, so, Do you uh, think you were going to get this guy whacked? Yeah, I think so. He was, he didn't, he didn't, I don't have to whack anybody. But, uh, this this is a wacky, you know, and so I I kind of uh, me and George just kind of like told this guy, hey, it's the last thing you want to do, pal. You know, what I mean, put a cherry bomb up your ass and light it. And I think two days later, his wife got flowers, and I'm sorry, and and uh, I ran into Keith. This was. 10, 15 years ago. I ran into Kiefer probably five years ago. And uh, I, hey, Kiefer, what's up? Hey, hey, Trejo, oh, wait, wait, hey, I've been meaning to call you. How, how you doing? You know? Because I've, have, I've helped a lot of people in Hollywood because a lot of them think like I'm some kind of thug or something. And, and, and they, they, I'll help them. They'll either love me and and you know be friends that call up on thanksgiving and come on over and that kind of or be scared to death of me yeah and just stay away from me and i understand because if if you're trying to be a man if you're a man and you're hollywood's got you thinking you're really tough you know and uh and you have to ask for help and this guy squashes whatever problem you had then all of a sudden you're either going to take it as <gasps> i'm weaker than him or he's my friend you know it depends on where your mind is you know so but i guess you've got those yes men around people that you were talking about before it can make that ego very fragile right it builds them up it builds them up it I, makes them feel invincible yeah, right right you know what i don't got no yes men my assistant is a guy named Mario Castillo that I met in San Quentin when I was doing Blood In, Blood Out. He was a resident. He won't say he was an inmate. I was a resident. I was renting a room. <laughs> and uh, and if you look at him, if you look at the dictionary, my two best friends are a guy named Mario and Max. And if you look in the dictionary, Cholo Killer Gangster. It's got their pictures. Okay, this is boom. That's just, and both of them came up the same way I did. And uh, you know, uh, it's like uh, we all have like the same respect for each other. You know, I, whether I work for you or not, you will respect me. You know, period. And and, and I do. They respect me. And I. Uh, it's funny the way God works. I met Mario in 1991 and been my friend ever since. 
<clears throat> he was in Quinton when he came out. He got clean and sober. And uh, <clears throat> I lived with him and Max for a while when I went through a divorce. Then when I bought a house, he came to live with me because he got sick and lost his job. And I said, "Well, work for me." So, so uh, became my assistant and ended up saving my son's life. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Makes me very happy indeed. Peace.